Within the weird world of anomalies and things that can catch you off guard, whether that be off-handed reviews about certain books that you know are canonically garbage, canonically trash, and yet people still claim that they're good. And then you have things that are canonically fire, straight bangers, straight legendary material that people dog on. You have in-between anomalies. That's what I'm going to explain to you guys today. In-between anomalies are basically canonically good or canonically bad pieces of work that are either so good or so bad that they can physically invoke reactions within you. Whether that be vomiting after you read Revenge R Us or crying your eyes out at the fact of how mid you can't scare me is. You know, we've all had those moments. Or you read The Haunted Mask and you smile. You smile that joker grin because you can't figure out why it's so good. It takes you aback, right? Or you read Welcome to Dead House, right? And you physically recoil off of reading some of the stuff because it's so dark and so disturbing. And you realize quickly, how come parents were protesting this kind of stuff back in the day? It all comes within perspective. But then you additionally have things that are either so good or so bad that they will make you cry. And this is one of those works. Now I brought up Goosebumps examples because the piece of work that I'm gonna be talking about today, no, I'm not talking about myself. I am a piece of work, but you know what? Doesn't matter, you know, Felicia, that was her number one concern of why she left me with Bozo the Clown from the nearby circus. You know, whatever. You guys sometimes talk a lot like her when you, you know, talk about me. I don't take it to heart. You know, I still enjoy you guys. Although, you know what I mean? But regardless, one of the works I'm going to be talking about today is actually a piece that is kind of like a Goosebumps spinoff. Not really, but Dan Angel and Billy Brown are involved within this other show. And after Goosebumps had problems, they moved over here to kind of show more creativity, use some of their ideas. And it is tied to Stein. And that is The Haunting Hour. That's right, you people. Clap it up real quick. Clap it up. This is the first Haunting Hour review on my channel. And it starts off with a banger. I'm not going to lie to you. The episode that I'm going to be talking about today is widely regarded as one of the best episodes in the show, as I lower myself. Uh, ignore that Taco Bell bag over there. That's just what I have. You know, that's just there. Not because, you know, I ate it last night and I forgot to throw it out. That's a visual representation that I will be keeping at certain points during uh, bad reviews for books and stuff. Because those are what those books invoke within me. The aftermath of eating Taco Bell at 3 a.m. Granted, this one is good, so it's not going to be regarding that. But regardless... Today I'm talking about The Haunting Hour, and we're going to be talking about one of the most universally known good episodes that I got to watch and experience. Now, I have seen this one before, and it was notable to me. There were parts of it that I really, really enjoyed. But after re-watching it for a long time, because I used to watch The Haunting Hour when the episodes came out back in the day. I used to get babysit, uh, you know, over at my father's, and I used to watch it every time it came out every week. And this was one that I watched during that time, and I did not watch it ever since then. So this is the first time that I've revisited this episode, and my god is it so good. It has probably one of the best kid actors that I've seen uh, playing a role within a kid's horror TV show. Uh, and shout out to the main character for that. It has one of the best uh, friend relationships that I've seen within kid's horror. I mean, you genuinely felt the dilemma between these two friends you genuinely felt you know the emotional connection because this is some stuff that happens in real life like the dilemma that these guys face yes you know what actually happens in the story is fictional and completely out there but the emotional ties is stuff that happens to us in real life with our own friends where sometimes you meet over interest and somebody grows up faster than the other person and you know you kind of separate from that and you can really tell that these guys care about each other. And that ending, the ending to this episode is so beautiful because it emotionally ties together everything that these friends have gone through uh, ever since the beginning of this episode, two-parter. Yeah, that's right. This is a two-parter episode. And if you can't guess what I'm talking about already, we are talking about the haunting hour, Creature Feature. From what I've heard, this is based on another story from another book or something similar to it. Uh, I'll probably have to go look that up and check it out. But this episode is fan 
fantastic. Off rip, this episode gets a 9.5 out of 10 for me. Fantastic score. That means this one is in the S tier for Haunting Hour episodes. And that's because this episode feels a lot like Goosebumps. It feels a lot like a Goosebumps idea that Stein would tackle. Um, however, it has this level of extra darkness and extra emotional charm that you don't usually get from Goosebumps books. That is the reason why I love it so much. Um, this episode is fun. This episode has a lot of uh, exaggerated comedy bits to it. It can make you laugh. It can make you potentially cry, depending on how much you care about the characters. It can make your skin crawl with some of the body horror. And it can make you smile because it does reference some things that resonate a lot with you and I, the viewer. So what's this episode about? This episode, Creature Feature, a two-parter episode, is about this kid who I think is named John. Now John is basically played by Joel Courtney, and I have to give a big shout out to Joel Courtney. Shout out to you, my man. Joel Courtney is the best kid actor that has come on The Haunting Hour that I've watched so far. Of what I've watched from Haunting Hour, this guy is the best kid actor. Of what I've watched from Goosebumps and the Nightmare Room and other kids' horror, Are You Afraid of the Dark? This guy is easily one of the best, if not, could be argued, the best kid actors that has come on here. This guy, uh, his character is basically named John and he's a movie fanatic. However, he's specifically in love with a certain kind of movies. He loves those old school cheesy horror movies. Ones that are called like, you know, Attack of the Teenage Tick and Beach Party Massacre, Beach Party Massacre 2, you know, if there was movies like Sharknado and Sharknado 2, he'd love those. Uh, you know, if Cocaine Bear came out back then and, you know, treated like a horror movie, you would love it, Crack Raccoon and stuff like that. He loves those cheesy, very, you know, schlocky kind of films, those old school ones. And he, he has this, like, uh, cinema room inside of his house where he has all these movie posters up. He has his own private screening theater, and he invites his friend, who I think is named Nathan, he invites his friend Nathan over whenever they hang out to come and watch these movies. And Nathan and him initially came together because they were both fans of these type of horror movies. They linked up, and you know, John being this big fanatic of horror movies and never having anybody to talk to, he's like, all right, I'm never gonna make any friends. But that's how this friendship with Nathan started. They both found this mutual interest. They started hanging out, and that's all they basically do every time they hang out. Because, you know, John is the type of kid, he's this very charismatic nerd. And this charismatic nerd, again, Joel Courtney played a fantastic job of. You get the similar vibes you get from when you watch Peter Parker. If you've ever seen Tom Holland play Peter Parker, or you've seen that kind of role played, that's who basically John acts like, that charismatic nerd that you kind of root for and you understand with and you have emotional connection to. Because since he's so in love with these old school horror movies and he's such like a nerd, he knows everything about them. He doesn't like going outside and like doing sports. He doesn't like, you know, going to like, you know, like, I mean, you know, they're not old enough for the nightclub, but going out to parties, going out to, let's say, like sports games or going out to like play bowling or anything. He doesn't like doing that stuff. He just likes being in his house, in his private theater, talking about these movies. He's obsessed with it. And Nathan was super understanding in the beginning. However, what ends up happening is that Nathan ends up finding this girl that he likes named Lisa. And Lisa is very, you know, popular, kind of shallow girl in school. And she happened to, I guess, or maybe I forgot if he asked her out on a date or if she invited him, but she invited him out to go to this party. He was super shocked. He's like, wow, that super popular girl wants to get with a nerd like me. And he has to try telling, you know, John that when they hang out the next time that, you know, I don't want to sit here tonight. I don't want to watch these movies with you. We do that every single weekend we hang out but you know tonight lisa invited me to go to this party and i thought i'd bring you along and john right away feels betrayed he's like whoa, whoa, whoa our entire friendship is built on these movies i became best friends with you because you're the only one who could share this horror movie fanatic kind of personality with me and i could talk about it with you and now you're breaking our oath you're hanging out outside and trying to force me into something i don't want to do and you know you feel conflicted because you're like all right we feel bad for John because, all right, we get it. He's a nerd. He loves this stuff. He's in love with this. And I mean, yeah, this is what they've done every single weekend. So he's kind of used to it. He's like, all right, my friend understands that this is the only thing that I like doing. But at the same time, Nathan's growing up and, you know, he's fallen in love. He's liking girls. Uh, he wants to try something new. He wants to break out of his normal routine. And again, they're both nerds. One is comfortable being a nerd and one is like, you know, I don't want to be 
thought of as a nobody or a loser my entire life. So I kind of want to break out of this bubble. You understand both perspectives and you kind of feel towards both of them. So you get this emotional tug, this back. This looks crazy. This is a crazy, crazy motion right here. I really need to stop doing that because it could be interpreted, especially if I start tilting my head, it could be interpreted in wrong ways. You get my point. There's an emotion. I'm gonna stop doing gestures. There's an emotional tug going on. And what ends up happening is Lisa comes, Nathan comes, they convince John to go. He's like, all right, you know, whatever. I'm going to go to this party with you, go to the beach, hang out. Um, he's not excited for it. He's kind of pouting and complaining the whole time. But as they start driving, basically what ends up happening is that uh, this big fog, this big mist comes in. Um, and this big fog and mist basically clouds up their vision. The uh, stoplight that they're at is not working. And then as John looks through the window and he looks over to his side, he sees this big movie theater that looks pretty much abandoned. It's this small, you know, this movie theater that's over there. It's all the way in the corner of the mist. You know, right away, his overactive imagination starts going. He's like, this mist brought in the theater. You know, we have to go there, Nathan. We have to go there, Lisa. Like, this is something that never, ever happens. We have to go head out and check it out. So, you know, they're very reluctant. They're like, you know, Lisa right away is like, why did you bring this kid? What's wrong with them? Nathan's trying to convince him to stay. And basically what ends up happening is, you know, John may or may not go out there to the theater against their wishes and they have to go chasing after him. And let's just say that uh, this movie theater may or may not be playing the type of films that essentially they're in love with, you know, John is in love with, you know, so basically these old school movies and you know john thinks that this is a perfect thing it's made for him there's nobody here they get it all to themselves however let's just say that these uh certain interests may start coming into much more of reality than you may hope that's where i'm going to leave it i don't want to spoil it too much let's just say that his interests may or may not get involved within their lives a lot more and he may or may not be getting a uh 40 personal experience into it uh yeah so that's what ends up happening I'm not gonna talk about the rest you should go watch it this is a two-parter so obviously you get the main setup and the main conflict within the first episode part and the next part is essentially them getting out of that conflict and what the negative results come from it and it's the second part that you actually get to find out how much nathan cares about john you see how much he looks after him he calls him you know he goes to try to find him you know he knows that what happened with this movie theater is going to cause problems in the outside world and potentially ruin one of their lives or both of their lives so he has to go out and save a certain somebody and fix it so you kind of find out that bond and the ending to this two-parter uh, the climax is very sort of like cheesy but it's fun it's meant to be cheesy and fun over the top uh, very kind of, you know, nostalgic in terms of how movies used to do things back in the day, which is done on purpose. And the, the very twist ending to this episode two-parter is beautiful. It is messed up in a way. You first kind of watch it and you're like, wow, that's messed up. They're really going to do that. That's where this episode's going. But then, you know, a character clarifies something. They clarify that this is this person's dream. You may feel that this thing is a negative but it's actually a positive within that person's life. And you kind of get both perspectives and you get this, again, I'm not gonna tear up, man, but you get this very emotional, well-written, drifting apart of two characters, again, done in a very movie-esque fashion. And at that time, I'm just like, I'm like, damn. Literally, damn, period. Kendrick Lamar album cover, damn. I'm like, yo, that is beautiful, but it's also heartbreaking. And it's messed up enough that you feel like it works but then it's like all right this could potentially lead to some sequel bait and we never got sequel bait even though i would have loved a sequel to creature feature because i love the cast of characters the same way i love the cast of characters in the dead body um which are by the way two very two very drastically different uh story episodes um and i was like yeah this, this is a perfect package for a haunting hour episode a kids horror episode i recommend that all of you guys go out there and check it out it has comedy in it it has a nostalgic factor it has an emotional connection it has emotional drama it has body horror it basically has everything that you would want out of like some of the best goosebump stories in the haunting hour and has a little bit of that darker more i guess like emotional kind of stuff that you won't see as much in goosebumps but done in this so 
absolutely fantastic. Joel Courtney, once again, the, one of the best uh, kid actors that I've seen in kids horror. It also has Brendan Meyer, and Brendan Meyer is actually Nathan. He's the best friend of uh, John, who's Joel Courtney's character, and Brendan Meyer is the main character from The Dead Body. That is why this episode's so great, because it's like, bro, I love Joel Courtney, and I love Brendan Meyer. Brendan Meyer's from The Dead Body. The Dead Body is uh, basically my favorite Haunting Hour episode, damn near, um, and he's from it, so he returns in this one. You also have uh, Matt Angel. Matt Angel is the son of Dan Angel, and Matt Angel plays the main villain, Jake Skinner, in the dead body. So Matt Angel returns as the main villain within this story. He plays a movie villain and my God, he does a great job. He's very over the top, very funny, invokes some laughs. Um, so basically this has a great cast of characters. This has everything you would want out of a story. And I would definitely recommend you guys go check it out. It's really fun. It's really kind of dark, but it'll leave you in a good place where you sort of question some things, but at the end of the day, it'll make you smile. And I'm very upset we did not get a sequel for it because the ending basically sets up this potential sequel that we could have gotten. And I feel like it could have been done very well, but it is what it is. The haunting hour is over. I don't think they're going to be bringing it back, but and obviously all the characters are grown up, so you're not going to do anything now. But shout out to you, Brendan Meyer. Shout out to Matt Angel. Shout out to Joel Courtney. Y'all did a fantastic job, um, and I absolutely love this. I recommend all of you guys go watch it. If you're a fan of Goosebumps and Are You Afraid of the Dark, this is probably my main recommendation for you guys to go watch because it's the easiest to transition over into The Haunting Hour if you've never seen it before, um, and it's probably what you would be looking for. So yeah, that's it for my review. This got a 9.5 out of 10, a fantastic two-parter, 40 minutes of goodness, and uh, yeah, you should go uh, check it out. Uh, it's also funny, too, because I mentioned the fog, this deep fog that's in this uh, episode segment, and uh, I'm actually reading The Mist right now by Stephen King, and all I'm going to say is that that pure white window in the background is really freaking me out, because if you've ever read The Mist, and you know the premise of The Mist, or you've seen the movie you would figure out why I'm getting creeped out by that, why I'm expecting some silhouettes or some freaky stuff to go on there. But nonetheless, we gonna be good. If you happen to see a shadow back there, just know that if I make it out and I make another episode, a uh, new video after this, that I am the conqueror of all Eldritch Horrors and I am the number one being in all the planet. All right, now don't tell that to the abominations that come out at nighttime. That's where I back out. But in the daytime, I'll handle it. I'll be good, all right? I don't know. Either way, thank you guys for tuning in. There's a subscribe button down below. Please go hit that. My goal is to hit 50 subscribers as soon as possible so that way I could do that Q&A video. I've never done a Q&A video in my YouTube career of, on my manga channel. That was the main one that I started and on this horror channel. So I'll be doing a Q&A. Hit the subscribe button. If we get to 50 subscribers, that Q&A will drop. Also hit that like button. The subscribe and like button are free ways to support me. Let's me know you guys are in, uh, engaged with the content and you like it. So again, hit that down below. Comment down below your thoughts and opinions. I know a few of you watched The Haunting Hour, and I know some of you have definitely watched Creature Feature. Let me know your thoughts down below. Did you love it as much as I do? Or did you not like it as much for some reason? If you do, just drop your name down, and I'll just add you to the ban list. Regardless, that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Stay tuned for the next video to drop soon, and I will see you later. The next one will probably be Are You Afraid of the Dark? So we'll be going back to that soon. That's it for today. Deuces. Man, I've had a migraine this whole day. I've been reading The Mist. I am in a messed up state right now. However, this episode made me feel a lot better to talk about. So I am in a bright spirits. Now I have to go back to reading The Mist and I'm going to be internally, well, eternally scared to go to sleep tonight. Yeah, stay tuned.